So I just want to talk a little bit about studies um, during this uh, sped up time lapse environment painting. Um, you'll notice that uh, while I'm painting, I'm using very simple shapes to establish the composition. And then I'm just kind of cutting into them and making the silhouette a little more interesting without really losing the character that I established with these kind of loose, bouncy, free flowing shapes. And that was the goal of the study to simplify shapes. And then once I had simple shapes, to find interesting textures using brushes that are made to capture it efficiently and quickly. That was my goal for the study. So I just want to talk a little bit about how I arrived at that goal and how I think about studies in general. So landscape studies. Uh, I love landscape studies. When I was a student, I hated them. Absolutely hated them. I did maybe two landscape studies the entire time I was in school. Um, yet there I was trying to do environment concept art and, and guess how good I was at it. Uh, not very good. Meanwhile, I did anatomy studies, gestures, drawing people from life, character design, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I kept improving at character design and liking it more and more and getting better and better, uh, which is kind of obvious, right? You follow something, you study it, you practice it, you enjoy it more, you get better at it. Um, but you also actually learn it. And knowing how to learn, not, not the skill set that you develop, but the process of learning uh, is also important. And it's its own skill. And it's kind of intuitive, and it's maybe best and easiest developed when studying something you're driven to figure out. And for me, and I think a lot of artists, especially beginning artists, that's characters. So you, you figure out this process of how to observe what you want to observe, and boil things down, and figure out the structure of things. And when you move on to the next subject, it's just a little bit easier. Uh, so why do I say all that? Um, I just kind of wanted to show that what kept me from learning environments was that the study side of it, studying landscapes, wasn't working for me. Um, so I was trying to draw subject matter that I just wasn't familiar with. And so why weren't studies working for me? Uh, well, first, I, I didn't try it enough. And that's kind of an obvious problem. I think a lot of people sit around and they're like, man, I wish I was better at whatever. And they actually don't jump into learning that subject. And they go back to what's familiar and what's enjoyable. Um, so that, that's a pretty common art problem, I think, for everyone. But another problem, and it's kind of a big one, is that I, I didn't know what I was trying to learn. Uh, to me, when I looked at environment art, um, I was inspired by how awesome it was, but then immediately baffled by how it was even being created. Just complete unfamiliarity. Like, how, how is it being made? What skills do I need beyond just basic perspective? Um, how do they choose colors? How do they figure out all of that light? How do they paint, like, 500 trees? And they just did this painting so fast. How do they do that? And it turns out the answer is just studies. Uh, but it's kind of a specific kind of study. So you're, you're not a meat camera, right? You're not going to just capture the literal reality of the scene before you. Um, you can capture part of it, for sure, and you know the complexity of a certain area. Um, but you probably won't capture that level of complexity and that level of detail, you know, replicating a photo, essentially across the spectrum of an entire scene on that scale. Um, and that's not really the kind of study you want to be doing, really. Not, not at first, anyway. What you want to study is making the scene your own. Like I said, uh, we're not cameras. Uh, and what that means is you're applying some sort of filter to everything you draw. So with nature, with this expansive scenery, you have to be especially aware and cognizant of how that works so that you're not trying to do too much and your brain gets confused or tired or just disinterested, too much noise, you know? So it's a matter of deciding how your filter works. How do you filter reality? How much of you is in your version of these things you're drawing and how much of reality itself is also in those things? That's kind of what it boils down to. And how did you choose to play that out? It defines your style and the style of your particular painting you're working on. Now this doesn't mean you're free to just slop things around and be like, that's a forest. It doesn't look like a forest, but that's just my style. Uh, now you still have to understand how things work. On some level, you have to understand how to draw realistically and how nature is composing these elements, how they're made, how they're constructed. But that's kind of the point. You have to understand how those things look and work and how they're made. But the key takeaway is you don't have to paint them how they look. You just have to understand it and then boil it down to how you want to represent it. So put realism on a scale of one to 10. 10 is photoreal. One is like a kid's cartoon strip. 
You can choose where you want your version of reality to land on that scale of realism. That's what you want to study. That's how you learn to draw countless environment settings without the insane amount of time it would take to figure out drawing and painting the literal reality before you. Uh, you're taking complex things and groups of things and you're choosing what needs to be captured and what can be let go. What does it take to state quickly and efficiently? That's a group of trees. You know, you don't necessarily have to paint a single tree. In fact, you probably won't. You want to capture that group of trees with a brush that's made to do it so you don't have to paint it all in. So at that point, you begin to see studying as asking yourself a series of playful questions and then answering them with your approach to how you paint. How few strokes can I use to capture that set of bushes? Can I represent that field of trees using only one shape? Can I get away with painting like that entire river with two values? That mountain range is very angular and chopped up. Maybe I can make it just a single curve. Simple questions like that that you can bounce off of yourself and then try it in your painting. And what you're left with is kind of a gesture of the scene, or a representation of it, where you learn to use a combination of brushes and textures and shapes to capture reality in a simplified form and a style that you enjoy. So when you go to paint from your own head or paint a similar scene sometime later, you have the kind of the muscle memory and the knowledge of how to boil it down and get through it and have it look good, but still be representational of something. So what I'm describing is still work. It's not like a magic key which unlocks being able to paint landscape studies, but it does accomplish a few things, three main things in my mind. So one, it's a framework for what to study. You can look through other artwork and note what it is you're drawn to. You can think about your own goals, your own style wants, your own knowledge gains, and try to determine what to observe specifically such as colors, shapes, particular style, uh, types of brushes, a literal asset, whatever you want to study. You focus on just that, and you don't get lost in the noise and the details. Uh, and when you're done, you compare it back to your goal, not to what you were copying, not to the photo, not, not to the scene before you. You look back at your goals, and that's your measure of success. So for one, it's a framework of what to study. Two, uh, it massively cuts down on the amount of time that you'll be painting. So if you're painting an entire scene photorealistically, settle in. You know, it's going to take a minute. But if you're painting, let's say, 50% photorealistic, that's, you know, several thousand fewer strokes. Keep cutting down time, keep being efficient, and how many hours will you save? A month later, how many days did you save? And so forth and so on. So because of the first point, which is a framework for what to study, and the second point, which is cutting down the time it takes to study, you're doing more studies and figuring out what you want faster and moving on to the next study. So you're expanding your knowledge by, by large degrees faster without spinning your wheels on details. And lastly, uh, it helps the process remain engaging and more fun, you know? It switches from, let's say, you know, I'm going to draw a bush. Instead, you think about how do I restyle that bush to capture it quickly and efficiently and move on. So it can change the way you think about and see the world. You kind of restyle it in your mind. You'll start doing that everywhere. And you'll notice that even when you're not painting, you're figuring out things that will help you when you are painting. So that's kind of the gist of it. That's how I think about studies. Have very specific goals. Use photos or reality itself to study those goals very directly. And then once understood, infuse them into your work and then repeat the process. Oh, and uh, last thing, check out the video description for a link to the photo I used for this study and uh, also the Photoshop brushes as well. So if you're inclined, you can follow along and see what you come up with. Maybe mute my cartoon frog voice and put on a good album instead and uh, send it my way when you're done. I'd love to see it. That's it for now. Uh, you know what to do if you like it. And thanks for listening.